This is an introduction into the use of a rather simple but powerful modeling program for wind turbine blade. It's called Blade Comp. It can actually work alongside other applications or FEA applications like ANSYS, Abacus, or Calculix. In this blade comp, you'll be able to define the different material layers for the different regions and segments of a wind turbine blade cross section. From there, if you're able to actually import it into one of these finite element programs, you'll be able to actually visualize the different layers that were defined within blade comp. From there, within blade comp, you can also define the different loads, both vertical and horizontal for the different load cases. From there, when you export it to your finite element application, you'll be able to actually visualize those forces within the application. A close-up of these forces has also been shown here when the blade has already been meshed. So this is a broad view of how the blade looks, assuming you put it inside the application. And when you run an analysis, you'll be able to do a query of the mass properties. You can obtain the volume, surface area, as well as, as, well as the mass of the blade. You can also do other queries in order to obtain the deflection of the blade. Hi there and welcome to Carpenter Resources. This video we are going to be looking at blade comp with turbine model and how it works. We'll be looking at how to download this demo program of blade comp as well as exploring the graphic user interface. This program was based on research from the University of Galway and it's actually a demo because there are other functionalities which are available but are not available in this demo version that we present here in this video. In order to obtain this application, you can actually go to this website with the link displayed on the screen to actually download it and see how it works. You can see that after modeling your blade, you'll be able to use it in different applications. So there are basically four groups of menu and toolbars. You have the menu bar, which is the first one. Under the menu bar, you have new file, open folder, save, save as, settings, as well as meshing, model, export. Next on the list is the blade generate toolbars and commands. Here you can see how it's possible to actually regenerate your model when you make some changes. You can also toggle on and off the different foil region and web to know which part of the blade those represent. So by toggling them on and off, you can actually understand how the blade comb works with respect to the different regions and cross sections of the blade. The third toolbars are the view commands. Here you have the different options, one of which is the global view selection. You can zoom in or zoom out. You can look at an ISO view, front view, back view, amongst others. The fourth toolbars and command is the blade modeling. In this, you have several commands which you use to actually generate this blade prior to it being exported from the mesh model at the top. So it has been expanded here. First of all, you have parameter creation which may not necessarily be used. You have different other options, profile manager, material manager, region layout manager, the load manager, as well as the meshing manager. All these options are things that you will go within and begin to update them depending on the look and form of your wind turbine blade model. So let's do a quick overview of how this actually works. First of all, you can actually select the settings of what you want to export your blade as well as an ANSYS file, a Calculix file, or an Abacus file. So it's possible to actually do that settings in the menu bar. So when we toggle on and off those options, you see when you toggle off for uh, the cross sections go off, region, other sections go off, and then when we go for the web, that blue section actually goes off. So yeah, you can actually see which part of the blade represents what. So in order to create a parameter, although this will not be necessary, but it's actually an option. Then here it actually talks about the region up and lower. So you have the top is divided into three parts, one, two, three. So top and bottom, which is upper and lower. So in order to create the cross section of your wind turbine blade, you can actually copy and paste the coordinates of each of the airfoils based on the different Excel file sheets that are available. So you copy it and paste it directly here and the whole X and Y values are uploaded. 
Next, we can actually determine where the different regions terminate and commence. So you can actually use the point numbers to determine the region boundary. Then this is the web. You actually determine which effort from the beginning to the end is where the web begins or terminates. Here is where you define the properties of the different materials for the wind turbine blade. So you may have them um, in the direction of triangular fiber as well as um, plastic, resin and the likes. Here is where you actually determine the different direction of the different fiber options you'll be using for the blade as well as their thickness. Next, you can actually determine the number of layers at each point along the length of the blade that you want to place of this material. Then also, you can actually sandwich them all together in the region layout manager for the different region 1, 2, all the way to 3. Then you can actually divide, define, you can actually define your forces here for load case 1 or any number of load cases you have. Next, you need to determine your mesh sizes. If your mesh is going to be 300 millimeters or 0.3 meters, you need to be consistent with your units. So to define the number of meshes for the wind turbine model. Next up is optimization settings. Although it may not particularly work when you export it to a program like Abacus or Ansys, but it's something you can always give it a try. It's true here, you actually export the optimization settings. When you are done, it's from here you export your model. So probably you say you want to use Abacus and you select your load case, then you do an export. So that's it on how to use BladeComp and how it works. Thank you for watching this video. This is Catment of Resources, where you create for better living.